Hi, everybody. Some new faces in chat. Hello, Eb. How you doing? Zio, how you doing? Lay, how you doing? Crow, what's up? How you guys doing, Palmer? Lamba, how you doing? Dump, what's going on? What's going on, Logo? Hi, 2000, how are you? Cordos, what's going on? Gallon, how you doing? Use Chopstick. Hi, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Good night from Cambodia. Are oh, you going to bed? Good night. Have a good night. Sleep well. Sleep tight. Zach, thank you so much for the tier one, dude. Appreciate you. First time here? Tap, tap, Sunday, Alex. Happy oh, hope you guys enjoy this to those stream. who are celebrating. Yes. Happy, um, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation even though it just said it. Ed Mabrak. Am I pronouncing that right? I see. I've been seeing a lot of uh, posts about that. Ratfest, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you being here. Um, Tay, hi, how you Alex. doing? Hi, chat. How you doing? Thank you so much. I appreciate the prime. Also, AF, thank you so much for your prime too. Standing with 60 teenagers in the rain, you're... Wait. What are you doing? Are you like lined up or something? Dude, it's a... Uh... It's been crazy. First time here, came from YouTube Standing videos? with 60 hey. teenagers in the rain near Brighton. You're really cheering me up. Thanks, Some sort of man. concert or something? What time is it there? Alex, uh, is the only person to call me Logo. Um, and I actually like it, but I can't use it as a username since they're actually a German YouTuber who is called that. Wait, how would you pronounce your name? Just uh, Log... I can't even, I can't even like, my brain can't even fathom a different way to pronounce that. Uh, first time here from YouTube videos. Hey, welcome everyone who's new. Appreciate you guys being here. Today is actually a very interesting stream because we're doing a keyboard that I took a look at a while ago and didn't really like because it had a bunch of inconsistencies with it. It didn't sound bad, but there was a lot of like weird inconsistencies with it. So uh, it's the spectacle. Actually, Alex, um, uh, finally catching you live. Just want to say thanks for all the streams. Anytime hustle. Appreciate you being here, man. Keeping me company for my bar exams. Hey, no worries, bro. Seriously, appreciate you being here. My word, how, oh my God, dude. My hair is like kind of wet still a little bit. I like dampened it a little bit this morning. It didn't really dry. We'll just chill. Um, also, wanted to point out something too. So I did a little something new with the cameras today. Quality, thank you so much for the prime. Appreciate it you, It will be that time again. Thank you, dude. Um, I did something a little new. The cameras are, you guys let me know if you like it. I usually leave the cameras set a little bit warmer because that's the style I kind of like. I haven't really touched my face cam. A little bit warmer with a tint of, ever so slight with a tint of green. It's almost filmatic. I did switch up some of the white balance to be a lot more neutral and accurate. These are the tomorrow keycaps. Um, no one asked me to do this. I just thought, I was thinking today because I also want to make sure you guys get like an accurate representation of things that we're looking at. Um, so I decided that maybe this is a good route to go. It, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you guys. Looks a little bit clinical and boring sometimes, uh, but I mean, I don't think it's taking away too much from anything. It is, I'd say this is like extremely accurate now, but uh, yeah, just, just not as much warmth. So it might be a little bit more on the clinical side of of uh, you know, stuff here. Looks like Boneyard on my Sonnet. Oh yeah, dude, I love the gray and greens. You need to bring up the saturation. Saturation is actually picture perfect right now. This is pretty much, cause there's a little bit of light reflecting on the board. This is pretty much like what I'm visually seeing is what I see here. Um, Love the middle part, Alex era. Thank you, dude, appreciate you. Although I have to admit one thing, I am not too positive how OBS translates to Twitch. Sometimes it does feel like the saturation on Twitch can be up the brightness a tad. Is it a little dark? Do you guys think it's a little dark? Should I, should I up at one? Is this a little bit better? Up at one like that? That's better? Perfect. This one here I'll leave. I don't feel like getting up right now, but. Shiny, Dang thank Alex you so much for the tier one, dude. Today, smile. Oh my God, dude. Thank you guys. Guys, how was your day yesterday? Do you guys have a good Saturday? It's like the one day of the week I don't see you guys now. Is that shirt made of blush from it? Oh my God, Insty, please, bro. You're making me blush. What's your go-to hangover meal? Kenny, it's been a while, man. But like eggs and bacon was usually my thing. Just bread. Like I found, found bread was always like really helpful. Um, what's the pad underneath my keyboard? That is called the keyboard mat. Angry, thank you so much for your tier one for three months, man. I appreciate you, dude. 
Thoughts on KTT King Whites? Uh, they're good. I like them. And uh, the Wave Riders, I have not tried. Can you tell me to stop procrastinating? Yoshi, guys, this dude, literal life advice. This is, this works for everything, okay? Don't worry about procrastination and stuff like that, okay? What I want you guys to do, if you guys are ever feeling like I don't want to even start something, two minutes. Just start two minutes. Just do two minutes. That's it. If you do two minutes, your brain, like, dude, I, at least for me and I, I, a lot of other people I've uh, I've started with, it seems like... Two minutes is not a lot, right? Two, just do two minutes. Uh, oh, Yoshi, ignore my stream then. But anyways, two minutes is all you need because then eventually you're going to have that sunken cost fallacy kind of kick in. You're like, well, I've already invested two minutes. Let me just invest more time. Once you get the ball rolling, super easy, dude. Um, super, super easy. I'm too tired to do anything. Just want to stare at my computer asleep. I tell my girlfriend that two minutes is a lot. It's true. You gotta do the, can you hold, is, two, is holding your breath for two minutes a lot? You gotta tell her that. And then when she says, yeah, then be like, then what's wrong with the other thing? <laughs> what's wrong with the other thing, man? Can you motivate me to go do work? Guys, get stuff done. It, dude, you know, I, I'll, Tofu, thank you so much for the tier one, by the way. <sighs> okay, guys, I need, I need to share this with you guys, honestly. I, I really do. I'm gonna say this. Ever since I started doing the walking exercises that I've been doing, dude, clarity, mental clarity for a lot of things. I'm not saying it's gonna help you guys too, but like, just go on walks, like do some physical activity, then sit down to do your work. There's a lot more like focus that kind of like gets pumped into your body when you do that. I, I, and I, when I started doing, when I started going for my walks like outside a few months ago, it really helped as well. But now that I'm kind of doing double that and going to the gym to do walks as well, that's where it looks comfortable. This is like the most comfy sweater I have. Post walk clarity, bro, it's real. Just get get a little exercise. If you guys are having trouble starting things, do those. Um, you guys aren't robots though. Like wait, also understand no one's robots here. You know, if you guys need a day off, take the day off. If your body's telling you you can't do something and you have some time, you know, to, to relax a little bit, relax, then get started with the thing you need to do. That sounds like grass and exercise, which cancels out my serotonin. It'll get pumped back in, I promise. Uh, what do you think about... Oh, patinas. I was like, what's M? Uh, patinas are nice. I like patinas. Bold of you to assume. Just don't eat the grass. I wish the weather was like last week. Uh, it's pretty shitty today too. I kind of want to go out today again, but dude, I'm a little bummed though. I think as I'm getting a little bit older now, um, there's a few things I kind of want, especially like camera wise. Like I, I would love some extra gear here and there, but like, dude, saving up feels like like, dude, I hate, I, I'm starting to really dread the saving up part. Because when I was younger, like, you're living with your parents, you're kind of living there rent-free. Like, a few paychecks, you're good to go, right? Um, but now it's like, even to save up like a thousand bucks for something, uh, feels like months and months and months of work. <laughs> it's crazy, man. How do you keep your desk so clean? Dude, just honestly, find, dude, that's the other thing I really want to get into is organization stuff. I really want to get into organization. Um, what set do you think will go good with a teal iron 165? GMK copper might look really cool with that. Or something neutral. Can I get a compliment? Did you redeem a compliment? Did I miss a compliment redemption? Oh, we need, you need to redeem one. <laughs> Glenn, love you, dude. I love everyone here, right? I'm going to do a, a, an overall compliment. Thank you guys for being here as always. Love you guys. Seriously. You guys are way too kind. Staying up is hard when you don't have to do it, when you generally have another priority. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm... Can I redeem an insult? No insults. That's the one thing we do not do here. That's the one thing I've, uh, I've been really... I don't know. Saving up for stuff sucks. Um, what's up, Salvin? How you doing? Uh, how do I redeem a compliment? Should just be in the, the channel points, no? A lot of Liam. Oh, my God. A lot of Liam. If I had to save up every single day just to have a flight out to you to give you a giant hug, I would legitimately save up every single day. Every dollar that I had, right? A lot of Liam, appreciate you. Love you, dude. 
Toom, what's up, man? Uh, you're my mashed potato? Mashed potatoes, man. I don't feel like getting into hot takes about foods today. Today does not feel like a hot take food kind of kind of day, dude. Guys, you can only see one switch in every board for the rest of your life. Or use one, sorry. Use one switch. Uh, KTT Roses. I feel like it taking longer to save up, though, makes the purchase all the more meaningful. You're very right, Rusty. Honestly, you're very right. I think I'm being a little impatient. I think I'm starting to realize that with one thing that I want, I've been kind of like sticking some money aside being like, okay, I want this, but um, definitely, definitely trying my best to uh, <laughs> be patient, I guess. Is it worth doing mods to tangerines like palm stems? That's very much preference based. A lot of these mods and stuff like changing out parts, very much preference based. Why not, right? I did build a forever. It was really nice. Need to add a time, or sorry, need to add a counter for how many times Alex shrimps for KTT roses. I love KTT switches. Hi, Space Cables. How you doing, bro? Can you give us a quick sound test of this Envoy? Okay. I actually am starting to really like this Envoy a lot. Not as much as the other one that I built, not gonna lie. But there is a nice difference. This is a lot more subtle of a sound signature. It's done with the roses. It's also done with the palm plate. So this one here is starting to grow on, grow on me now, but I also think that this, this keyboard, because the springs are lighter, is why I'm actually enjoying typing on this more, because I like lighter springs. So it makes me want to like redo everything and do a long pull envoy with light springs. No foam, yeah. What profile would you say this is? Oh, what sound profile? This is definitely leaning towards more of like a mid front. It's subtle, it's more subtle, it's not quite as in your face. But mid, mid forward in terms of sound signatures. Roses and KTT King Whites. Honestly, dude, I have a very hard time differentiating the different KTT switches when it comes to sound. I think they do a great job of making their molds and their switches sound great, but a lot of them sound kind of the same. You can give me a light spring in my step every time. Oh my God. I give you a light spring in your step every time. Oh my God, dude. Don't make me blush right now, bro. Oh my. You guys should see the switches we're doing today. <laughs> Dude, when I saw this box of them, I actually thought I, they sent me some like mangas or something. And I'm like, what is this? These are the, the boxes for the switches. <laughs> They're called Ka Kaisia switches. I don't really know how to pronounce them, but they're pre-lubed. They're very interesting. I'm gonna buy those now. They are, um, hold on. I, I have to read, I was looking up the switch specs Interesting. I don't know how I feel about this. Bottom house is modified nylon and they add it Teflon. Interesting. I don't think I've seen that in a bottom housing. I don't know if I thought Teflon is not a great material. Um, and then they're using a stainless steel spring, 20 millimeter extended special steel imported from Japan. So the springs are apparently really good in this. It's a JWK switch. I'm hoping the leaves are okay. Uh, this is a stem of an LY material using UPE as the main material. Not too sure which ones share those. They are factory lubed and apparently there are a little bit of a lighter spring too. And the top housing's PC. So we'll see. JWK switches typically I find have a much brighter sound signature. I'm going to use these stock because apparently the factory lube I was told by a few people is pretty good. And I did take a look at one of them before. Oh God, I hate opening these packages. Is it technically an L if I didn't join a raffle in time? I was gonna give it a shot as a Lilith. Oh yeah, it's closed. So it's not an L. He's hey chose Alex, not to join how you. are you doing? Derp, I'm doing good today, man. Honestly, today I am, <sighs> today my goals are just to do the stream. I'm gonna do a little bit of light work for everything else. Um, I think I want to spend some time with my camera today. I wouldn't mind going out for a walk, even if it ends up being a little cloudy, because I kind of want to go outside and maybe take a few pictures, be a little bit creative, and then really hit tomorrow hard with productivity. I think that's kind of like my goal for today. But what about you guys? How, what do you guys have planned for today? Anything, anything nice? 
Yeah, man, I've just been cloudy best, even lighting. Yeah, it can be a little bit uh, sterile at times, but maybe you'll find some cool places with some color. If I had to daily drive a keyboard you made it in the past year, I think it would be the Envoy. Not bad. This this stock lube. I think this is fine. I can definitely see this benefiting from hand lubing though. But this is JWK stock lube. So I do think this is a lot better than some of the other ones that I've tried. We'll see though. We'll give it a go. Um, any switch recommendations for a half plate build? What, what build is it? More importantly. Today I'm smoking pork belly. Ooh, dude, I want to cook something today too. Time to dial a new film simulation, go outside and have some fun. Yeah, dude. I think that's what I might do. Maybe I'll take the Fuji outside today instead of the Leica. Cause the, I've been really enjoying, I don't know. I just gotta kind of go back and forth with both. Uh, once again, catch your stream at 1am here from Vietnam. Hello again. Hey, what's going on? Hi, hi, how you doing? Which mods would improve how the Tofu 65 2.8 both sound and feel? I don't know. I think I would really need to take another look at the Fuji, or not the Fuji, the um, uh, Tofu. I think I would really need to. Oh, maybe go with Cherry Switches then. Cherry Nixies. A Gawk Ven build? Nothing's on my list right now for that, but if someone sends one in, for sure. All right, these are the Switches. Cool, we got these. A few packs of these they sent over, so we'll open these guys. Cute box. There's all the um, specs on it again. There's more, I feel like there's more info on the actual website though. Oh, come on, focus in. Oh my God, this doesn't like it. So, Lucas, I like you so much for the tier one, man. All right, guys, I'm not gonna lie, dude. I was struggling to take this piece off of the box. So I just left it off when I was doing the inspection of everything. Cause now, now I'm just in this mood. I have to make sure everything's in the box at all given times now. Um, Cause I'm tired of getting like scammed of the things out of the box. So I couldn't get this piece back on. I have no idea why. So I'm just gonna leave this off. But here's the box now. So this, like I said, this is gonna be a very interesting, interesting stream because we've already taken a look at the spectacle. The spectacle, I actually have a, which is I think the last time I've ever done something like this. I actually have like a three minute quick review on what I thought about the spectacle. Um, and they, I had received a polycarbonate one Salvin, it's not just you, <laughs> it's everybody. Dude, everyone lately has been giving me less stuff in the box and I can't complete builds. Um, hey Alex, after too long, I'm finally building my angle V2 with alpacas. Those are a nice switch. Very nice. The comfort with these switches and PC plate is mad. Yeah, good combo of stuff. All right. Do they fix the things you noticed? Yes. And we'll see because I haven't gone into detail too much with it myself quite yet. This was the little point of, I'm not gonna lie, opening this, even though I knew something, yeah, 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 Kenny, yeah, um, trust me, I already know, man. When I got this, I was like, yum. This is, I think, one mil. So it's not even 1.2, it's one mil and flex cuts. However, this does not exist in the production run which kind of sucks for me taking a look at this because this doesn't even exist in the production run at all. Apparently they're doing 1.6 for, they're doing no flex cuts. Like they have an option for no flex cuts. And I think this combination of stuff doesn't even exist for the solderable PCB. So what I'm probably gonna do today is add foam because this thin of a PCB plus flex cuts is you obviously know this is gonna be kind of thinner. So we're gonna just take this out of the equation. We're gonna put a little bit of foam inside. Uh, I've been told the foam is a better, not quite as dense foam that shouldn't affect the sound too much. But uh, the final production for this apparently has no flex cuts and you can get a regular schmegular PCB, which is appreciated. This is April Fools. No, nah, we like, we don't mind foam. I don't mind foam at all. We haven't really done a foamy build in a while. So flex cuts, what they do, just to kind of explain to you guys, um, all these pockets over here, like all these like areas that flex on their own, as you guys can kind of see, it's cool in theory, right? Very cool in theory. But the moment you put any sort of, let's 
grab a plate. I think they sent over a polycarbonate plate. The more you put any plate that doesn't have matching flex cuts, which people usually will go for like a polycarb and then say, oh yeah, it flexes a lot. You're just adding that type of unified kind of feeling back to this entire uh, PCB. So yes, you, cause like now it doesn't flex individually anymore, right? So nice. it, that's not happening. I've always thought that this is a bit of a, well, not always. As I got more into keyboards, I started thinking, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. You kind of need to have the flex cuts to be matching for it to make sense. So that's the problem number one. Problem number two is it ends up sounding thinner um, because there's a lot of room for sound to just kind of, I'm, I'm just using a metaphor here, whistle back you know, through these little crevices here. So again, not my favorite thing in the world, to see flex cuts and things, um, simply because I do feel like there are better solutions to get a more flexy kind of mounting style from stuff, but it is what it is. Some people like these, I'm not gonna shit on them, like they're not a bad thing to have, but I do like the fact that they're offering options, um, which is perfect. I like seeing options. Options is the foundation of customization, so it is, you know, it is what it is here. Uh, Koma, thank you so much for the Prime, by the way, bro, I appreciate you, man. It blows my mind how much long pull switches help with hollow boards. It's so different, right? It's so different. Uh, idea, what if you file the hex, uh, flex cuts with more flexible material so they have more mobility? So if you guys remember the Link, the Link 65, it had those like ribbons kind of attached to them. It'd be really cool if they just added that everywhere. I, I don't know exactly know how that would work, but. People have been asking me to look at Mons Geek stuff. I just haven't got around to it yet. There's a lot of stuff to cover, and I also do a lot of client builds, which I kind of, I kind of have always preferred doing client stuff. It's always fun making someone's board sound really cool. So magnets on the case. Interesting. We got some foams. Feet. Okay. This I'm gonna ignore. I don't know why they sent this over. This is. This seemingly does not even get offered in the group buy. They're like little foam pads. I didn't see anything on the website about these little foam pads. So I'm just gonna ignore that these are in here because these use gaskets socks, which I much prefer. So these have a thick, thicker bottom and thinner top. So gasket socks, I like these again. Small little improvement for me. I like gasket socks. I like non-adhesives. Cool. Uh, have you seen the Type B? That's from Canon Keys, right? All right, now, this was... It's a lot better now that it's not polycarbonate. Tell you that much. Interesting looking board. It's uh, that five axis thing that they were talking about way back when, when it came out. Uh, this is like a, I don't remember what they called this color. It's a cool color. It does not have a weight, but it has these really cool curves on the sides. The side profile is super neat on this, dude. Side profile is super cool on this. Yeah, re really cool side. You know, from like a visual standpoint, I think it's a cool looking board, kind of flares and tapers upwards. So it kind of arcs up, kind of neat. There's a little bit of a recessed USB-C cable, the Stylo Studio, because this is now a collaboration between some people, still on the back there, uh, which I'm surprised it's still on the back there. I thought maybe they would have done some more like collaboration branding, which is fine. I would have loved to see a weight on this, but the cool thing about this though is this the price point. By the way, guys, this they did send me this to review. I'm going to be as critical as possible uh, and without being, you know, whiny and negative, and I'm gonna try being unbiased as I possibly can. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna put this here so it doesn't scratch. I would have liked to see a weight, but this is $219. So I'm not like overly mad about this, not including a weight, because the price point isn't outrageous. Now, hold on, I'm gonna go back to this because, yeah. They have optional stuff, but yeah, it's 219. I don't think there's any other variations of this board. It's just 219. Not terrible, considering it does have a little bit more of a complex side piece to it. 
Um, we'll see if it's worth the 200. Yeah, for sure. This GB happened and I think it failed because it didn't get enough buyers because there was some problems at the time with it. The original one, which I do not have anymore, I gave that back. The polycarbonate had a, was very, very unfinished. Um, and the problem with that polycarbonate one that we got, I couldn't properly close the board because it didn't have any sort of screw, um, like the helixes and the polycarbonate. Uh, so it was all stripped. So I, I couldn't even screw it together. But this is the, the board now with some you know, changes, obviously. They've now done a collaboration of things. Nothing too major though, but the Anno looks really great on this. I really like this color. Has a channel on the inside, it says spectacle there. This is the hidden screw design. Sorry, I got some like spitting as I talk here. And again, very cool side profile if you're into that. I think this is kind of where this board probably would shine in terms of its visuals. For some reason, my brain wants to say that this would be really cool if it flared out a little bit more, but I guess that's how you look at it. Yeah, I guess that's really how you look at it. If you look at it from like a little bit of an angle, it kind of flares out nicely. Uh, yeah, I think they have a regular layout too. I don't think it's just HHKB. I think it's either or. Yeah, they do. They have either or. But that's kind of taking a look at the case. All right, let's put our feetsies on here. Uh, you know what? Let's put this here. So they are trying again, yeah. Compared to the Envoy later, probably a good comparison since they're around the same price point, for sure. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys, for the design of this board. Interesting to cover this board a second time, for sure. Very, very interesting. Can you draw a weight on the back? I could draw one. Yeah. Uh, they said they're offering a non-flex cut PCB, yes. And I believe one mil, again, I think it's one mil because the 1.2 mil stabs that I have don't fit in it. They're too loose. So I'm pretty positive this PCB that I have is a bit thinner, but they are offering two different PCBs, which is, again, starting to not really understand why nobody sends me the right PCBs. Um, that end up going in production models. I always seem to get like the flex cut ones that I have to let you guys know are being changed. But that ultimately will most likely, and you have seen it, change the sound profile of the board. Usually for the better though, I'm not mad at that. Where's the thing that I read here? Um, I read somewhere on this IC about what they're offering. Oh yeah, so 1.6 um, PCB that's soldered. Yeah, so the standard, your standard PCB or they're offering a hot swap with 1.2 and standard flex cuts. So they are gonna still offer a flex cut PCB. Okay. I like the curves, yeah, the curves are pretty. Let's see it from the side over here. And this camera's a little darker, I need to brighten this camera up a little bit, but you can kind of see it. It's cool. That's kind of nice. Look at that, look at the way the light reflects on that too. Watching you principally on YouTube, you helped me uh, find, dude, I'm glad I helped you jump into the hobby, man. Really, really appreciate you sharing that sentiment with me, man. Hope you're doing well today. Just when I, uh, just when I went to brew coffee, thought about how nice it would be to watch Alex while drinking it, and here you are, solid. What's going on, man? Oh, dude, I don't have Black Lotus here with me. It's still at my parents' house. There are so many controversial topics in the keyboard community, especially with flex cuts and GMK keycaps. Um, uh, what do you mean by controversial, I suppose? Let me zoom in a little bit here. <clears throat> because I, I feel like Without being rude, hold on, where's the daughter board? Did I just for totally forget to look at something in this box again? Oh my God. I thought this had a USB-C port on it. Cause like, I don't know. I feel like people kind of cry wolf when it comes to their feelings. Um, when it comes to that kind of stuff. Why? 
lose the daughter board somewhere? Is it somewhere in here that I just don't see? Is it fall out? I swear to God I saw one earlier. Maybe I didn't see one. Forbidden, thank you so much, dude. What the fuck? This is such a perfect built, um, this is built perfectly in such a great unit. Another, on another note, I like the keep. Hey, thank you, Forbidden. Hold on, I need to find if they sent me a daughter board or not. Maybe I didn't see one. Maybe I'm just imagining things. These are gaskets. This is more gaskets. If they didn't, then that's my own fault. I was like going through everything this morning too, and I was like, oh yeah, everything seems to be here. Is it, oh my, dude, guys, no one talk about this. Just leave it alone. I didn't see it in the case, all right? I thought I had to screw it in. Just, just leave, it, leave it alone. We're gonna pretend this never happened. Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone, dude. Dude, this happens a lot. Have you ever done that with your glasses? I've done this so many times. All right? Could you compare it with the tofu? Uh, yes, I should have one still built. I should actually need to send out. That, that's a prize winners, but I've been taking pictures with it and then um, I took it out of the box. <sighs> it's a small daughter, but you guys didn't see that. Side eye. I don't like that meme actually. But anyways, the controversial topic, topic. That's the one I want to talk about. I feel like people make these topic controversial for no reason. Do you guys know what I mean? Because like, I feel like criticism, the criticism I even had and many other people had about the flex cuts were like completely normal, valid conversation. Um, you know, voicing out maybe a frustration, voicing out maybe some opinions while still acknowledging that people use the other thing. And people like took it really to heart for some reason. Um, and dude, even, oh man, even lately too, like, I don't know what it is. If you say something and you're like, hey, I like this, people get really offended and they kind of feel like everyone needs to have the same opinions as you. It's really weird. Um, I don't know why people do that, man. It's kind of strange. They're not controversial, their opinions, but the crazy people on both sides blow to proportion. Yeah, dude, it's, it's like not fun sometimes to talk about these things. Another thing that's been happening a lot too is the comparison of things like, okay, I built the, the Lilith, for example. Uh, I can't believe you liked that thing. I barely cared about. Yeah, I know Rex, right? And then suddenly you care about it. The Lilith. This was like when I was reading people's comments about this and there was actually a few that I ended up deleting just cause like I thought they were really like angry, rude and sort of hateful towards a lot of people. Uh, and I don't like when people start name calling. That's like instant, like, listen, I'm not, I don't care about your opinion anymore. You're just being an asshole. There were a few people, uh, even more than a few, I'd say more than a handful of people who are saying that the Lilith was a clone of the QK60. And bro, I was just sitting there scratching my head. I have both boards. And I'm just like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? And there was like one guy, I think maybe his comments are still there. One guy just like, going ham about saying that the board sounds exactly like his QK. And I'm just like, man, like, it doesn't though. It's, it's so weird. Like maybe yours, maybe, you know what? Maybe yours, but for me, both the keywords sound different. I remember seeing that yesterday in the highlight video. It's crazy how like angry people are getting over that kind of stuff. Like, I, I still think this is like the, the the best criticism I can ever give anyone when it comes to like acknowledging that people like different things than you. Bro, if someone releases something and you don't like it, sure, you can have an opinion about it, but the moment you become like angry about it, take a breath and realize you don't have to buy that product. You don't. If you were maybe interested and you would like maybe, you know, again, constructive criticism, maybe some like, you know, actual points to the table. But when you start to get like hella angry about something, just because the product got released doesn't mean the money um, automatically is on the table and you're exchanging. Like this doesn't, doesn't exist. I don't know. It's, it's so weird, man. 
If you don't like something, don't buy it. Yeah. The unicorn is basically a clone of the ducky one too many. Oh my gosh. V dub compliment. You know what's an automatic buy though? Dinner for V dub, bro. I swear to God, the, the money just comes right out, bro. It's crazy. We love V dub. Hope you're having a great day today, dude. Appreciate you. Alex being spectacular about building spectacle, definitely the most spec. Oh my God, spectacular. I can't even pronounce this, Roro. How you doing, Roro? That's just my opinion. Oil Kings or cream sodas? Um, I prefer the cream sodas a little bit, but the Oil Kings aren't bad. I just think you really need to go in and lube them again. V-Dub, love you too, bro. A lot of people attach their preferences and to their personality and they feel attacked. Yeah, they do. They do, man, it's so weird. Actually, this $550 keyboard sounds like my 179 and you're dumb for getting it. Yeah, like, I guess I hate these arguments because like, anything in the world can literally be broken down to, well, I, I, this cheaper thing does the same thing. And I, I just, I fucking can't stand it because like, guys who are into shoes will shit on guys in the keyboards. But meanwhile, if you, Dude, you don't even, like, if you really want to break it down to stupid semantics like this, just go walk outside. You don't need shoes, period. Just train your feet. Like, why are you spending money on shoes? It's like, uh, like, even people into bags, it's like, you know, I hear a lot of people who are into bags and have valid, you know, love of collecting bags. At the end of the day, bags. Gregory is the best GMK set. Damn, no the Asian dude coming out of nowhere with this, this Gregory, like, comment, bro. Um, but yeah, just like leave people, like if people like something, just leave them the fuck alone. Fuck. We were born without shoes on. We don't need them. Yeah. Everyone loves something. Let people love what they want. Yeah, exactly. People are very stuck in their ways of like preaching what they want people to enjoy. It's like very weird, bro. Gregory is based. Thank you though, Asian dude. I appreciate you, man. There's no debate that Alex is cute as fuck. Oh gosh, dude. I need to get my haircut this week though. That's like on my to-do list 110%. Haircut day. Evolution gave us feet capable of enduring so much shit and you want me to wear shoes? Yeah, exactly, bro. I would never. <laughs> Look at this good looking. Okay, guys, you guys are actually making me blush right now. Stop, stop, stop. I like the shaggy hair look. Nah, I don't, I, I just can't, I literally like it's at the weird length right now, which usually I cut it or just power through where I just can't style this. It just ends up looking really messy all the time. I have to power through this, uh, this length, let it flow. Oh my God. Uh, evolution gave us Alex and you want me to endure other streamers? Oh my gosh. Have you tried the Canon keycaps? Can or sorry, Canyon keycaps from Desker. I have not. I don't even know what those ones there look like. Happy Sunday, guys. Yeah, for sure, guys. It doesn't really feel like a Sunday because it's miserable outside yet again, but I'm finally shipping my boards this week. Hell yeah. I was like wondering, Kenny. I was about to message you actually. Uh, Alex, do you think the Link 65 was the tipping point on your stance with flex cuts and PCB thickness? Okay, the, the Link 65 was a weird keyboard because it set out to do some cool different things, but for just the sake of doing Aspen different Link's things. Aspen Link's gifted a tier one sub to Schwilliam. Dude, Aspen, thank you so much for gifting a tier one, bro. I appreciate you, man. The, the Link set, okay, am I wording that right? The Link set out to be different and it had really fun potential. But they basically, yeah, they basically admitted that it was literally just an engineering flex saying, here's what we can do. Look what we put in this keyboard. So yes, it was an engineering flex. Yes, there's a lot of cool things inside of it, but none of it I personally feel was implemented in a way that did anything to better your experience with a keyboard. There are keyboards just as flexy and bouncy as that one there without the need for the, you know, engineering on the, the over-engineering on the PCB. 
Now, what I think they probably should have done is really sat down and thought, okay, we have this really cool stuff we can do. How do we heighten the experience of typing without just sticking everything into one thing and using the same old mounting style, etc.? That's what they should have done. But they didn't. And it ended up being a very thin sounding, you need foam. And they kind of had to backpedal and stay on the, I need foam in this keyboard to sound good. Which, I mean, again, people like foam, so do what you need to do. But it was just, it was a weird experience overall. It wasn't my favorite thing in the world. It wasn't a, uh, dude, ish. I wouldn't say it's a bad board. If you like that foamy sound signature, the link definitely was a pretty board. It also had like a really cool build experience with it where I believe, if I recall, it didn't really need many screws. None of, none of anything, but just a lot of weird engineering like flexes and just like showing off, but for the sake of nothing. I slept on PE foam and used Crytox to brush my teeth. Or you sleep on PE foam? How does it feel? Marbly? Does it feel nice? Looking sexy today, Alex. Uh, does tonight sound fine for a day? 2000, my guy. Come on, bro. Uh, it tastes fine. I just don't like ha having to use foam. That's kind of where I'm on too. I like it when it's an option. But to me, the problem is a lot of boards with loads of flex cuts, you have to counter it with foam. Yeah, and again, there is the argument you don't have to, but it's very rare that I see people say good things at boards with flex cuts having a thinner sound profile. In fact, even from everyone's reaction here, every time we've ever done that, it sounds doo-doo and everyone's like, yo, this sounds doo-doo. But, um, I don't know, man. Any keycaps, any keycap sets you recommend uh, to complement green sonnet? Oh man, if you can get your hands on Boneyard. Oh, Polybius. Dandy would look really cool too, but Polybius is a really cool contrasting set. I would definitely say if you can get your hands on Polybius, get Polybius. Polybius is actually kind of neat for that. Foam is good, but if the board can't sound good without, I feel like there are less options. Yeah, and I think what it comes down to for me is if I'm spending a lot of money on a board, if they want to include foam as a modifier, that I like. I love when people add that because there are definitely people who appreciate that, right? But if you want to add foam because you need it, you are limiting the market, you know, that you're going to sell to. And as a consumer, I probably won't buy it. And you know, if I was to make the board, it just doesn't make sense from a marketing standpoint of why I want to limit my target audience. Does that make sense? PBT Resonance is a really good board too. Yeah. Or a good set rather. I like PBT Resonance. Thoughts on Tofu 65 2.0? Um, it was okay. It was, uh, to me, nothing special. What would be a good fee to pay someone to build a DIY soldering keyboard kit? I mean, I don't know about other people's fees. I think anywhere between 50 to 75 would be kind of fair. But, um, DIY stuff takes a long time to do. So I don't know exactly how many hours someone would put into that angry. I'm, I'm not too sure. Are you going to be building a Kuhaku R2? I'm not too sure. 200 is definitely on the higher side of things, but like, it's not on, fuck. I, I, I would definitely say like, if, if you're paying 200, that person needs to show you tons of like work and stuff like that. At the end of the day, it should be like a two hour job total for just slowly putting it together. Uh, so I, I think 200 is on the higher side for sure. I wouldn't pay any more than that. Guys, is there a way to get an extremely quiet keyboard that's less than 200 bucks? Pick up anything and buy silent switches and lubricant. Easy peasy. And go with something plastic. One good thing about switch pads is they change the sound, sound signature without impacting the flex. Yeah, that too. Appreciate some men use providing mods to block the flex cuts if they wanna. I mean, I think the only people that I've seen that now, like that do that kind of dedicated stuff or, you know, KBD fans and uh, even Gray Studios offered some if you end up buying a flex cut PCB. All right, I 
think that's it. We're doing standard layout, right? I'm doing regular schmegular backspace. Um, WS Silent Linears are nice and cheap. I don't know if you can find these ones, but the, the Hamu Heartbeats. Dude, those were sick silence. Do you think a white set like Honor Light would match the Mirage? Yeah, why not? Dude, when you're talking about color matching, like when you're thinking like neutrals, anything that doesn't have any sort of tint of color will match literally anything. White, grays, um, they usually go with just about everything. Maybe grays can be a little divisive because sometimes grays like this, this was a point of contention, not contention, but this was a point of discussion actually this morning because I compared this, some people say this looks a little bit green, which I don't disagree, it sort of does in the stream here. This is definitely a very warm, almost slight brown hued gray. So this is not quite like the, the grays that you would normally find, this dark gray here. It definitely is a hint of brown, which is fine. But um, it it pulls different colors in different lighting, like a lot of different uh, keycaps. It, it sort of feels like an olive in this light, sort of. But when I put it under like very clinical lighting, it, it pulls more brown. And I think also the green board isn't lending any favors to like the color hue here. Have you ever seen the UnKeyboard's website? They get a lot of obscure switches. I have not seen that, no. This is a green Envoy, yeah. All right, let's put some other stuff here. Oh, man, I am tired today. What's the most common mistake beginners make when building their keyboards? They rush. It's, it's, uh, it's a very common mistake, actually. People rushing to finish. Um, Stabilizer is usually a big thing. Overlooping, someone just said that too, I think in, stat, in chat. So, the number one tip I can give you is slow down. You don't need to finish this in two hours. You can take all day to build it. You can take a week to build it, nobody cares. It's fine, take your time. Um, and with, when it comes to lubing with stabs, just do light coats. You don't need to go crazy with stabilizers. You really don't. You can always add more lube. And with switches, do light coats. You'll probably appreciate light coats. And then as you get more into building things, you can start to figure out what kind of coat you like, right? Uh, random AF. Oh wait, can we buy Lofta? Another? No, yeah, dude, I'm trying, man. Uh, random AF, but just want to shout out the, to the Canada specialty coffee scene. Two coffee roasters you should definitely check out in Canada. Hustle, can, can you DM me these? Low key, dude. I've been, I've been really liking this place called Everyday Gourmet. It's in the St. Lawrence Market. But I, I wouldn't mind trying some other stuff too. Monogram, I have not heard of. Rogue I have. Monogram, I have not heard of. Monogram, I think that's how you pronounce it. Interesting. I fell into flex cut hype. I discovered I don't like them. They're more of a nuisance than anything. Kind of diminishes the value of a mechanical keyboard when you have fewer options. Dude, yep. Man, I feel like, guys, I feel like I caught so much hate when I, when I was like, when I had enough of flex cut stuff and I was just like, guys, I really don't like this anymore. I feel like I caught so much fucking bullshit. Bro. Tried Monogram, Monogram and Rogue, they're both very good. Ooh. Are both specialty roasters, one LP, one OM? Which one's the one in Ontario? How do you keep track of all the switches on the market? I don't. There's no possible, I'm not a switch, like, I'm not a switch connoisseur, maybe that's the right word for it. I don't really know switches as well as some of the other maybe creators or people in this hobby, but I have stuff that I like and I have stuff that works for me and I stick to those things. And then once in a blue moon, I try new things out, but I know there are people who like, I feel like with keyboards, there are a few different routes you can go in this hobby. There are people who go down switch rabbit holes and they just like no switches, you know? Then there are people who just really like keyboards. Maybe there are people who really like keycaps, but switches are definitely one of those like rabbit holes within the rabbit holes. You literally changed the market to what so many people want it and they're accommodating. I no, no, I'm so glad that's happening now, but the people who were like so anti change, dude, they were loud, man. 
that 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 vocal i guess piece of people they were loud about how they really didn't like the change i like alex and alex Otis accessories mr kubo what stabs are these these are 1.2 millimeter wuche stabs the v2s i think they are they're good nothing wrong with them i have so many that they sent me that are 1.2 and i never use so i was like might as well use them today uh can you give an example of change um what do you mean change in what sense a lot of Liam. So nice. A lot Thank of Liam gifted a tier one sub to Mkapo. Thank they you, man. I appreciate that. They have given six gift subs in the channel. Thank you, dude. Appreciate the sub, man. Really do. Uh, let's plug this guy here. What's with the new hairstyle? It's temporary. It's not forever. I don't... I'm going to be honest, guys. I like it the first day I style it. And then if I sleep on it, it's not like my favorite thing in the world. Can you speak French? No. Very minimal. Do you think it's worth switching from the Mode 65 to the Mode Envoy? Um, no, I don't think so. If you like your Mode 65, like it's not like it's not like the world's gonna change if you switch to the Envoy. I think it's a better experience personally, but the Mode 65 is kind of nice. Who suggested this? Me. I like, dude. It's not it's not nice right now. The haircut's like the hair is like not the best. Actually, it's okay right now. It's not that bad. So it's a little messy. But me, I, I, I have always kind of liked this hairstyle. Um, however, it's not easy to do and it takes a little bit more to do and then it gets messy really quick. I think my favorite hairstyle is when I slick it back. Um, but that's even kind of like tough depending on the length of hair. And I don't like it when my, my sides are long like this, but my hair grows so quick, dude. It grows too quick for me to deal with stuff. I have not tried create keycaps. I don't think so. The PCB is an SP60 Rev1. I've never heard of this PCB, by the way. So this PCB I'm unsure of, but it does have underglow. For what reason? I have no idea. I'm not too sure if there's a polycarb version. Where's the stab here? Um... Key parts are temporary, but Alice's hair is eternal. You guys are so cute, man. I fucking love you guys. I'm from Toronto. Are you selling your Jim K sets? No. But I don't I'm gonna be honest. I would love to be some sort of vendor for you guys, but I am. Um, that's a whole other job, and I don't think I'd be able to do content creation if I did that. And uh I'm gonna be honest, I don't sell my own stuff. Very, very rarely do I sell things. Only if I have duplicates of stuff. It's just a very, it's a big conflict of interest for me. So I don't, I try to stay away from that whole lane of stuff. The life of a vendor. I feel like the vendors do a pretty good job of like being super transparent. Mike's doing it right now. I think Mike's streaming novel keys. I felt so bad for an acquaintance I know. We were chatting last night and they told me that they built Cthulhu switches with, with three switches because they didn't know cream sodas were a thing. Oh, yeah. What did they say? Did you tell them? Mike's awesome? Yeah, I like Mike. He's a good guy. Good old, good old Mike. Have I used Kinetic Labs keycaps? Yeah, they're good. There's nothing wrong with their keycaps. They're PBT. If your cup of tea is PBT, they sound like PBT keycaps. Um, their double shot stuff has gotten better. It's still not the best double shot PBT stuff in the world. It's very rare that I like double shot PBT though. Mode's doing a great job. These are double shot, but it's a PBT ABS mix from what I understand. So it probably helps out with some of those molds. Cup of PBT. Ah, I see what you did there, John. That's pretty good, man. DM for Alex Topix, huh? They didn't know until after they did the task. Oh. Uh, it's okay. Now they have lots of other switches, right? They can experiment with. Cup of PBT. That was pretty good. That was pretty good, John. The Mode Tomorrow keycaps give me GMK Oblivion vibes. Yeah, I definitely say they have a hint of brown overall or like just a slight hint of color 
on the uh, the keycap too, which is kind of nice. A little different. I don't mind it. Also, guys, I'm um I'm almost done beef watching beef. It's all right. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It's an okay show. There's some themes like within the show that's I'm like, oh yeah, this is cool. I like it. This is kind of deep. But the show itself. Eh. I loved beef. It was okay. I think I would maybe maybe I need to finish it. Maybe I really need to finish it, but oh, you know what I need to watch tonight? The new Mandalorian show, the episode. I think it's the final episode, right? I heard it's really good, but I don't know. I need to watch it. Was it good? Did you guys watch it? It's the finale. I'm more of a chicken guy myself. Ah, I see what you did there, dude. I see what you did there, man. Picard also? Picard. Like Star Trek? I don't know. This Mandalorian season has been kind of... It's been, my honest opinion, not that great this season. Uh, it, it's been very dull and boring and... It's doing nothing for me, but apparently the final episode is pretty good, so we'll see. Star Fox. Thank you, I'm man. I'm almost finished with Succession. It's really good. I've heard I need about a that replacement one too. show. I'm thinking The Expanse. I have not seen The Expanse. I've heard about Succession being really good, though. I've heard it's really good. If you haven't seen Andor, Andor is really good. Dope Sick watched recently. Dope Sick was amazing. Uh, definitely kind of sad, you know, based off something that actually happened. Um, what else has been really good? Dope Six is really good. It's a it's a really good look into that side of pharma, big pharma, you know. <sighs> Science fiction. Okay, I'll take a look at that. All right, well, thank you so much for the prime. I appreciate your three months of being here, bro. I'm just drinking some um, G Fuel, but the flavored stuff, not the actual uh, energy stuff. I already had coffee this morning. Okay, I'm going to put mid plate foam in this. The Expanse is definitely worth watching. Is it on Netflix? Ooh, this is very... Okay, I am glad that they didn't make this foam overly thick. Because again, I was told this foam is supposed to be a little bit better than just the regular foam. Like, it's not supposed to be as muting. They have PE stuff, we're not gonna use that. And there, I think there's under plate foam here too. We'll see if we need it. I'm gonna avoid using it though. Night Agent, what's that? Fave Cafe in Toronto? I'm gonna be honest guys, I don't really go to cafes much. Um, The last cafes that I've been to I think it's called Dark Horse or Black Horse on uh, Queen Street, I want to say, or Spadina. I think that's the last one. I I don't really go too many, man. Cafe 23. I do coffee at home, you know. Tendine. See, I've never heard of these. My favorite coffee origin. I, I've been really liking the Brazil beans as well. It's so nice. Foam dies of cringe. It's okay, guys. There's nothing wrong with using foam. To be clear, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using foam. It's all preference. We're gonna try using foam today. See how we like it. Interesting cuts on the plate here. Hmm. All right. Let's put this all together now. Hmm. Very interesting. All right, where is my switches? Uh, why are people against foam? Um, you know, there was a lot of, uh, uh, some people a while ago, to put it nicely, 
there was just like this whole hype to hate on it. I think it's an amazing modifier for people who want different sounds out of their keyboards. I think there's like this stigma about if you if you're a key for a designer and you use foam then you didn't build a good keyboard or something like that i don't necessarily agree with that like if you want to build a keyboard and base it around foam then do you i think marketing wise you're going you're obviously limiting yourself which is fine but um personally don't mind foam foam's not terrible okay so what's going on here why aren't these is this plate like a little too big or something? Okay, I might need to solder down some corners here. Plate doesn't want to seem to sit very nice. It seems to pop right back out. Could be the switches not clicking into place nicely. Kind of seems like that's what it is. I guess we have to solder in our corners here. Uh, silicone bases? Again, totally preference. Yo, Burbless, how you doing, bro? How are things? Totally preference. Um, it adds variation to your build. If you like silicone bases, you do you. How is the Pixie Mini? Oops, I liked it. We are thriving out here. Burbs, that makes me happy to hear that, man. I hope everyone in chat's always fucking thriving, dude. We just want everyone here to thrive constantly. Only good vibes. The plate does look a little bit awkward. Maybe the plate's a little bit bigger than it's supposed to be. Yeah, it kind of looks like it's bowing in the middle ever so slightly. It's okay. Well, let's solder everything down and see if that's a consistent issue all the way through. Let's just put some solder on some of these things here. We the 1% here. We up there, we the 1% here. Uh, I thought I bought new IEMs with the switch boxes. Oh no, I know they kind of do look like IEMs, huh? Um, solder, 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 here it is. How do you organize your switches? I put them in bags and I put them in a box. They're not, I need to figure out a better method. Like it's just a totally different mythology to like actually doing that though because it's still not that good. I need, I, I really need to figure out how I want to do it. I was thinking about making my goal this week here to figure out organization a little bit better with stuff that I have. I just don't know yet what I want to do. Uh, this eggplant color is showing uh, up a lot these days. Maybe it's popular. It's like a burgundy, sorta, not really. More of an eggplant, like you said. Uh, let's see the switch box, Alex. Give me one sec. Nice to catch a stream today on a Sunday. What's going on, dude? What kind of headphones are you using? I'm using IEMs. They're Campfire Andromedas. Uh, hot swap for life. Nah, I actually really like soldering. These switches though don't really click into the PCB very nice. So, unfortunately, not the best experience there. Uh, I bought move. Where did I buy these headphones? Headphones.com? Like literally, it sounds like a scam, but it's not. That's where I picked them up. I like IEMs more than I like headphones these days. I just do. I think the weight of having headphones on my head constantly is a little bit distracting. This is HHKB, right? Uh, 
Uh, what do you think of chai fi in general? Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, there has been uh, some amazing releases in that category. However, I will admit though, some of the cheaper stuff that I have purchased over the years has not been the greatest longevity in terms of just lasting me and breaking down and stuff. Uh, I, I think the only IEMs over the last four or five years that I've been into audio that have really lasted me are these ones here. But the, if you if you take care of things, I'm a bit rough with my, my stuff. I, I truly am. So take this as someone who kind of, you know, drops things and tosses things to the side. Uh, some of the cheaper stuff has not really treated me well. But again, in the same breath, my Sony Z1R, uh, IER Z1Rs have also died. And they're outside of warranty, which is really annoying because those were like supposed to be my big IEM purchase and they fucking died. So yeah, I, I, I truly think like the, on, the only IEM I think I would go again and purchase would be these guys, the Andromedas. Everything else has just been like plastic shells, which are fine, but not great quality in some of the other stuff. I recently picked up some mason jars from Dollar Tree. Um, dude, those always look pretty when you do that, right? More intimate experience with IEMs. I like how you put that last archive. It kind of is, right? You kind of do have that more like, your, the sounds there. Budget IEM recommendations. Moondrop makes some really good stuff. I would pick, I would say Moondrop has the better lineup of budget these days still. Uh, yeah, the, the Truth Ear X Critical Zeros apparently are really good. I've not tried them, but the, apparently they're also supposed to be pretty good. These are actually really pretty switches. Here's the box of the switches again. It's pretty, like it's a cute box. I'm using them right now, Amazon 50 bucks. Which ones? Oh, the uh, clinical ones. I've got Truth Ears and they're really nice. Should I pick up a pair or two then? Um, I've been using plastic organizers that are meant for bolts. Yeah, dude, I used a fishing tackle box one time. Actually pretty nice doing that too. Uh, are the keyboards you make for sale? So they offer group buys for them, but the ones that I specifically make here on the stream, um, I don't sell anything that I do. Oh, you know what I didn't even notice on these? They're kind of blends in. They're actually the LED diffusers on these too. I think we saw these in the, uh, uh, those new Wu Chase switches as well. So they have diffusers, not that, dude, this is the one thing I, not that many custom boards even offer these switches or uh, you know, perky LEDs, but cool to have none, nonetheless. I mean, I can't really show you right now, but they, uh, they should diffuse the light from LEDs. Uh, I'd like to buy a high-end pair of headphones, but they can run up to $1,500. A good set of headphones that I, I don't know if they're still good anymore. It's been a while for, for me for headphones. Um, they're planar. They're from Monoprice. I think they're called the Monoliths. Those are actually not that bad. And then I would say, if you're gonna go with anything, pick up a pair of IEMs. You don't have to spend a lot of money on IEMs and IEMs are fantastic. Budget boards seem to have perky LEDs more than high-end boards. Yeah, and I think that might just be like a style choice that some people have, I'm not sure. I only dip my toes back in the headphones every couple of years. It's it, it, Headphones are way more expensive than keyboards. Way, way, way more expensive. You really have to be into headphones for you to want to get headphones. Do you prefer the Mode 65 foams and silicone preferred on it or not? Oh, what do you prefer on the Mode 65? I think visually the Mode 65 was really pretty. It was the only keyboard mode did with that kind of uh, back piece style with the magnets. Uh, I preferred 
the non silicone base. I'm here for an actual factual spectacle, and I guess the keyboard as well. Geo, you make me smile way too much, bro. What the hell? I'm redeeming the hydrate? I'll get the hydrate right now. Sorry, I'll put it in the keycaps or the switches, rather. I'll do it right now, dude. I got you. Thanks for hydrating me, guys. I think backlighting gets associated with the gamer aesthetic. Dude. Okay. This sounds... I don't... Okay, I'm not saying this is factual, but it seems to me the gamer aesthetic is kind of dying right now. That whole super RGB look, it seems like less and less people are really into that. I'm seeing a lot of guys that I used to, like, be friends with that are are very gamer aesthetic forward. They're all switching to a more professional minimal style these days. And it's very rare that I, I kind of see like those really heavy RGB inspired rooms. And I don't know if it's just a trend. I'm not really into that scene anymore. Plus I was banned off our battle stations for stupid reasons. So I don't really frequent our battle stations anymore. I think that's just people growing up. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's true too. That's honestly a very good point. Do you guys have like an RGB setup these days or? I wanna, oh dude, I wanna take out my moon tower again. I, I think I'm completely off of RGB. Why did you get banned? So basically, quick story because um, I think I've already told this story a few times. Basically what happened was um, they, uh, they have a stupid rule on these reddits, these reddit threads, that basically feels counterintuitive to having community and discussion, which is you're allowed one post ever with your setup unless there's drastic changes. Whatever the whole like changes means is up to the mods. So you're only allowed ever one post, that's it. If you have the same room your entire life and you don't really change much, but like maybe you get a new monitor, that's not, that doesn't count according to them. You have to have a whole ass new setup. I didn't know this. Um, so one time I posted my setup and like I, I wasn't doing this, what I'm doing now. I just was really proud of my stuff and was like, I wanna show it off to people because that's how I kind of, I just was really proud. I just wanted to show it off to people. I wanted other people to look and maybe give me some opinions and some style and maybe inspire someone else. I didn't care, I was just proud. Posted it. Uh, Few months go by, I changed up a few things. I think I had gotten a Mac computer, an iMac at the time, and got like a new mouse and keyboard. Was also really proud of some of the small changes I met, and I was like, wow, I'm actually really adding a lot to this thing. Posted the new setup. New because I thought it had some changes done to it. This is where things start to turn weird. They banned me for three months, seeing that my last setup picture looked exactly the same. And I'm like, that's stupid because I added changes to it. And I told them, hey, I added changes to it. They didn't respond back with a good answer. They just said it wasn't enough changes. Okay, three months goes by. I made more changes. They deleted my post. I made more changes, dude. To the point where the only thing that was the same was maybe the where the monitors were because there were different monitors, different keyboard, different mouse. I think I even got a new computer and the desk. But because I had the, the LEDs in the same spot and like my room had the general same aesthetic, they banned me again for three months and said, uh, this is still exactly the same. And I was like, bro, what constitutes a major change? Because like I just spent, like it was like what, $2,000 for an iMac? I'm like, that's, that to me, that's major. Like that's a lot of money, dude. And they were just, they were like dying on this hill that one post per person ever. And I just, me, I just, you know, had my two cents and I'm just like, this is stupid. This is like you being like, I'm like, do you like have friends? Like, I don't understand why you're being so like, this is so weird. Like, how do you, how do you contribute to a community then? Like, nope. Then he got mad at me for saying that. So he permabanned me. Yeah. That's it. One post ever per person. Unless you buy a whole new house, boys. That's it. Whole new house. Um, then the mods tried to have him arrested for harassment, yeah, for real. And, and then that's what, that's what really like 
woke me up to some of the subreddits of uh, like communities. Just very angry people in charge of running them, and it kind of kills the whole vibe. Reddit is such a waste of time. Yeah, I, honestly, I do not like visiting Reddit anymore. There's nothing I like going towards. The, the, every time I, I go to a Reddit thread or get directed to one, and maybe I try to want to contribute. Like recently, it was a camera Reddit. But the rules are like, the rules are just like you're going to prison. Like, it's so weird. Like, there's no room for, you know how like we talk, we can have conflicting opinions. The rules are like storybooks. You have to sit there and study them. It's crazy, some of these subreddits do. Uh, yeah, that's what happened. Uh, there's a lot of really cringy communities. Only found one or two Reddit ones. Yeah. There's always people that will look up your post history and point out some aspects of your setup are the same. Yeah. A lot of my posts got removed when I got banned. They just deleted a lot of stuff. I think they left up one or two. When did this happen? Uh, this probably happened four or five years ago now. It was like a few months before I got into custom keyboards. Finish re my stabs, no more ticking. Let's go, dude. We love that for you. Very happy. Absolutely love it. Uh, quick question, Alex. Do you have the Rico? Oh, I have the 3X. Um, you know what, if I, if I had to rebuy them though, I would like to try the three just cause the, it's what, 28 mil I believe? But I don't know if I'd want to use a 28 mil. I kind of like the cropped in factor a little bit. I'm not very good at shooting wide. I've always been better at shooting a little bit more cropped in and getting a frame that way. I feel like it's more of a personal preference thing. Uh, I have the Fuji X-T30 with a 23, uh, 23 mil lens as my main. I used to have fisheye lenses. I used to, when I was on Nikon, I had 20, I had like a 28 mil, I had an 18, I had like some crazy fisheye stuff. I went through a phase of trying to get good at wide photography like that. I, I just never liked what I was putting out, I guess. And I kind of defaulted back to my, I like 50 mil. I'm gonna be honest, even switching to a 35 millimeter lens these days for going out to take pictures has been a huge change for me. Um, yeah, if you want the 28 mil, get it. Cause I think, I think a lot of people prefer the 28 over the, what's the other one, 40, I believe. Love the Fuji 23. 23 millimeter on Fuji is 35 millimeter equivalent. Because the crop sensor, yeah. Right now on my Leica, I'm shooting with a 35 and a 75. But then on my Fuji cameras, believe it or not, I mainly have zoom lenses for Fuji because of video stuff. But uh, my favorite lens on the Fuji system is the 80 millimeter macro lens. And then I also have a, which is the one you see on this webcam over here, on this face cam rather. This is a 35 mil. And this is, I think, one of their older lenses. This one here is really nice. It has really nice, like, color roll off and stuff like that. There are other lenses I really want. Some very unique specialty lenses, but... Uh, that's uh, maybe another lifetime, to be honest. I, I don't think I'm ever going to have enough money to buy some of those things. Or if I continue to work really hard and see that. Fuji colors are so vibrant. They're very pretty. Fuji does a great job at a few things, which is their color science, um, their main selling point to their cameras, IMO, is their film sims, but they have really good menu systems, a lot of customization you can do to your photos. Fuji JPEGs, for anyone who doesn't want to get into raw editing, fantastic. That's where they're really, sh they really shine above the competition, it's just how good you can get their JPEGs. I know a lot of people have been kind of racing to this film sim stuff too. Uh, this is a film extractor, yeah. Got a bounce, take care, derp. 
Alex, how are you? Just in time for camera talk? Yes, just in time. I did some product photography this week and actually felt like I knew what I was doing. It was great. MP, what have you been using for product photography? What lens? Lenses are very important for product photography. You can really shape a product differently depending on the lens that you have. Boss check, got you. User experience in Fuji is just great. Actually, the best camera user experience I have tried to date, and I've used every system under the sun almost, almost, there are still a few systems I haven't used. To date though, Leica. There's nothing like, nothing at all like the Leica menu. So simple. Probably because it doesn't have things like autofocus and stuff like that. So simple. Everything's just so easy to find. One of the best camera menus I've ever had the pleasure of using. I tagged you on a Twitter about a board I'm proud of. I will definitely take a look. I love seeing other people's uh, creations. Definitely, definitely we'll take a look at that after we're done stream today. Tried the like, or sorry, the Sony zv e 10 Is that the new one? Is that the new one all the content creators have been going super crazy about? Uh, no, that's actually their Tomorrow's with uh, keycaps. That's mode zone keycaps there. All my socials are in my bios, guys. I'm so happy I'm a content creator on Instagram. I got a job as a videographer. That's so nice. Hey, congrats. With like a big company? That is huge, man. There are some very talented content creators actually, even in chat with us right now. Very talented people here. I'm always very proud of your guys' accomplishments, by the way. If no one's telling you that you guys are doing a good job, you guys have no one in your life right now doing that, and you guys are absolutely trying your best, being pr productive as you guys can, following your like what you guys love to do even if you guys are just doing your daily tasks and getting them done putting food on the table i want you guys to know that i'm proud of you guys people don't realize sometimes that it does take a lot of fucking energy to even do that everyone's built different from one another so just want to let you guys know i'm super proud like i said even even you guys waking up in the morning going just getting your ass out of bed to go to work very proud of you guys. We're very blessed. Uh, just bought a 10 at 70 after seeing how beautiful it was in your video. I hope you have a good experience with it. Some people have been telling me some bittersweet experiences with the whole process of buying it from them. But the board is generally pretty cool. Kind of complicated to put together though. For work, I don't think it's a choice, or is it? Ah, it's always a choice, but the choice of ma making sure that you at least do your thing, huge. There are a lot of people who uh, take other routes out, you know. Uh, have you tried the tomorrow switches yet? Not yet, everyone's been asking me to do those. I haven't really had a keyboard to really put them in yet, so soon. I don't know what it is about this plate. It just seems to be a little bit warped on the side. But it didn't really impact the build experience all that much, other than having to solder down some corners. But I think we're done soldering it all. All right. Been dragging myself out of bed lately, but I do it for the better. Yeah, you're, you're gonna have weeks like that, 110%. By the way, Slurpless, love you, dude. Hope you're having a great day today. You'll have weeks like that sometimes, guys. Some weeks you'll feel like giving up, but you can't do it. You just can't. It might even be these Wuche stabs that have put a little bit of pressure on the... It shouldn't, though. Interesting. You can see it's slightly raised over here. And it looks like it's not the back of the stab. It seems to be the front of the stab. 
Again, just simply cutting this part out on the plate, just for people who make plates, I don't think that should affect sound at all. Makes the whole build experience easier though. Definitely makes it easier. All right. Now this is done. Root beer floats yet? Right here. I need to just figure out what board I'm gonna put them in. Maybe we'll figure out, ooh, figure out this week here. What board we want them in. <clears throat> Watching Alex live for the first time? What's going on, FZ? Oh gosh. Ah, need to burp. Thanks guys for letting me do that. What keycaps? I don't know what keycaps we're gonna use today. I actually don't know. I didn't put any thought into keycaps. What bit do I need? Looks like this bit. Next sonnet with, oh, we could do a sonnet with it. I think I have one extra PCB. I'm still very indifferent on screwless design keyboards. I guess a large part of me still doesn't care that they're screwless design. I don't know if you guys care about it. EU friendly stream times? Yes. I'm hoping to add a few more this week too. Oh wow, this is way different. I'm pretty positive. Again, if memory serves, there is a video you guys can watch. This is way different from the original spectacle on the inside. So you guys can kind of see from the side. I should brighten up this camera ever so slightly, but it's okay, I'll do that later. Very different. He's specifically doing that because he knows that that's when I work. Oh my God, Chozo. No, it's not, dude. Uh, yes, we're gonna add the, not these. These, I don't, I, don't, I didn't see these on the website, but we are gonna add the other stuff that he gave us. Yeah, it's, it's like an eggplant purple. If it's like the number two from Kiko, I care about those, uh, I care about screwless. If it's something more basic or less flamboyant, I could care less. That's good. I mean, like, that's cool to see that you guys have different varying opinions on that too. I've always been a little bit meh on how I feel about it. The thin side goes on the top from what I read too. Because there's two sides for these. God, I love gasket socks, man. Gasket socks are so nice. Installation on these things is just so fluid. It just feels better than sticking adhesives everywhere. FZ, thank you so much for using your Prime on me, bro. Appreciate that, man. That means a lot. Not to mention easier to put on. Yeah, that's for sure. So nice. Thank you guys for the follows too, guys. I really appreciate it. You guys are way too kind. All right, so this should just technically slip in here. Now, I'm gonna put no foam on the bottom, but we'll see, because it doesn't have a weight. I'm a little nervous it doesn't have a weight. And this should technically just fall into this. All right. I like this a little better than the original spectacle already. Although I don't think I got the, no I didn't. I think they need to, right, I think we got it now. Perfect. All right, that's kind of nice. What's your opinion on cream sodas? Uh, fantastic switch. I really like the cream soda switches. I really hope I don't have to like trim the, I do need to trim them. Still my, my gripe with these, uh, with these, what's it called? Actually, you know what I could do? Oh, fuck it, I'll do a trivia. Basically, when you're doing screwless design, the screws, like the place where you screw stuff in, the little mounting points, end up being too large sometimes for the uh, switches. So the switches kind of taper off in the distance there. Thank you, Samuel. I appreciate your prime here, dude. Really do. Hope you're having a great day today, man.
All right. Screw it all back together. I think we should make a keyboard with D30 foam. What's that? Was there different links to these? I think there is. These probably go on the top then. Um, you ready to turn up the workouts this week? I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna try my best to, to turn it up to 11 workout wise, you know? This is the 60% one, I believe. Never seen this case before, but is it just me or does the bottom corners look like they will not allow keycaps to go properly? We'll see. I am not sure. We'll see. I don't know. If, is everything aligned? Everything looks aligned. We'll see though. I have, like I said, I've never built this particular updated version yet, but that would be a pretty big oversight if it didn't allow you to. Slap on Obscura? I was actually thinking we could use something else. I just need to figure out what I want to use. About to get into that summer lean as heck. Come on, bro. I plan on getting some serious into lifting and general exercise. Dude, all of us should. Literally everyone here. At least do some, some walking and some running. Everyone should though. Um, what do I want to use for this? You know, I know this is kind of like a default set for me lately, but can we do future funk? I feel like Future Funk would slap on this. I need to tune the stabs a little bit. Well, there is a little bit of shifting of the plate. Maybe these what these pads are for? Are they for alignment? It doesn't really say anything on the website about that. So I'm gonna do something else too. Do we need the bottom foam for this? Is that what this ticking is all about? Hmm. What is causing that? That is weird. Do you guys hear the ticking? Band-Aid mod? I don't know what's causing it. Let's see. Maybe it's me? Did I forget something? Could be me. I don't want to like say it's not me. Or I'm human too. Doesn't look like it. I think the, um, I'm not gonna lie guys, I think the bottom is so shallow that I think I need to put a little like something on here. I think that's just literally the bottom of the PCB tapping against the, oh yeah, look how, here, look how shallow this is. I don't know if you guys can get a good look at this though. So this is kind of where it becomes a confusing design, right? Because it has all these flex cuts and stuff, but at the same time, it doesn't really allow you to, hmm. Yeah, that is tapping on the bottom. Hold on guys, I'm just making sure. So nice. Hey yo. What the hell? That AO sounded so weird. Sacker, thank you so much for the tier one. Uh 
Oh yeah, it is. Okay, uh, it is. So if you guys can kind of see, it's literally impacting the bottom of the case and becomes very stiff. That's not a great thing to happen, obviously. We do not want that, but it's there now, so we kind of have to deal with it. Again, defeats all the purpose of having flex cuts. All the purpose. I think they're definitely gonna need to raise these up over here. They would definitely need to raise that up. Yeah, because the thick side's on the bottom like they had mentioned. Let me see something quick. Maybe make sure. Let me make sure I am reading the gasket things right. Um, gaskets, thinner on top, thicker on bottom. I'm not doing it wrong, just so you guys can see too. So you guys can see, take this off, thicker on the bottom, thinner on the top. Well, completely took it off now, but. So it seems to be they need to raise the gasket points, which maybe this is why they sent me these. Are these supposed to go on the bottom cases over here? Again, it doesn't say anything. I don't even see anything about this on the website. Hold on, let me, again, I don't wanna like build this keyboard. Maybe they changed something. They have like another spectacle keyboard, click, clack. Hold up. I don't think it says anything. Unless th that was a change that they made. see anything about that guys you need to double gasket okay see that's that's strange to me we're gonna take out this because I see nothing about these gaskets at all on the IC but I mean that would make sense if you need to double gasket it also kind of counterintuitive though if you think about it do they have a video on it look here let's see Oh, Tofu Types built this. Let's see, let's see. Okay. Yeah, he did put the gaskets there. Why is there nothing about these gaskets on the website? That's so weird. All right. 60 frames per second videos. How are you guys with 60 frames? Where's my tweezers? How are you guys with 60 frames per second videos? I, I actually, I've been told a few times that people really want my stuff in 60 frames a second. I do not like it. It makes me feel so weird. These are really thick gaskets. Interesting. So it's a mix of two gaskets. I think they need to update their ICs though. Zoom out, Alex. Hold on. I do think they, I would like them for them to update the IC to include the use of both the gaskets. Cause they make it seem like on the IC you only need the one gasket. Double gaskets, here we go. I think that's a bit misleading. Quite frankly. Um, super thick backseat drivers, it's okay. It's okay. I don't mind people slightly backseat driving. It's a collaboration between all of us. At least it's not triple gasket. Has people done that before? I don't think I've ever seen a triple gasket style keyboard. 
I think this will give it a lot more flex. Yeah, probably. Well, it's okay. Looks like I missed something, but again, didn't know we had to add these. I was curious. I was like, what the hell are these for? I redeemed a compliment. Oh, we did? Slurpless. Slurpless. If you were a keyboard, I would let you know, man. Even if you didn't come with instruction manuals, I would spend a lifetime figuring you out, all right? A lifetime. Love you, dude. This is not an end of the world thing though, guys, just to point that out. I don't think it's a bad thing that we have these extra gaskets. Just would have been nice to see it on the IC or somewhere on the group by page. Because even if you look at the breakdown of the video or the uh, their little skeleton thing they have of the, the keyboard, it doesn't show these. Um, yes, I'm the Jane. Took forever to get that back plate. Oh, wait. Did you get it? Did it come in yet? 60 frames are good, but I'd say with specific videos. I just don't even like watching 60 frames for... Even, like, maybe video game stuff, but for actual people, I prefer 24 frames or 30. 60 feels like, uh... You know on the TVs, when you buy them? I don't like this gasket being a little crooked. When you buy those TVs... Now you can think about using the socks inverted. Yeah, we could possibly do that too. But I think I'm just gonna leave them stock with the thicker thing on the bottom. The motion smoothing shit. That shit's garbage. My girlfriend likes that, so we leave it on. But I, I hate the, what it does to like the TV and stuff like that. All right, time to put this back in. The artifacts it causes is gross. Yeah, you get some weird artifacts in some some areas. It's not that bad, but like artifact-wise, it's still kind of weird. Holy smokes, this is gonna be flexy now. All right, let's see. Does this raise it up enough now? Yeah, it's plenty. With enough pressure, though. Enough pressure that it'll still bottom out a little bit. Is that possible? No. Not under normal circumstances. So we're okay. That takes a lot of pressure to even do that. All right. Let's see. Very heavy hands. How, uh, how about we remove the socks? Let's do with the socks and stuff. Let's build it as intended first. And then we can go from there. What type of lens do you have on your overhead? The kit lens. Believe it or not. I started a little build earlier today. Made me want to buy one because it was very, very, very pretty, but I can't afford anything right now since I snagged a very discounted Corsa. Hey dude, one keyboard at a time, you know? It's all good. The course is sick. Don't ever feel bad for not spending money on it. Fuji, it's a Fuji kit lens, yeah. It's the one that, uh, I mean, I don't think, I think Fuji offers them not kit it body only, but it is the kit one. The six, is it 16 or 18? I think it's 18 to 55. Yeah, how did you get a discounted Corsa slot? Even I'm curious. I already put a screen on this one, whoops. All right. Like I said, I was told the foam is supposed to be a lot more generous in terms of allowing some uh, sound to come through. I don't exactly know what foam it's supposed to be, but we'll see. Digging the color scheme? Yeah, me too. I really like this color. Now that I'm putting the keycaps on it, I'm, I'm really vibing with this. The keycaps look nice on this guy. 
Uh, that would make sense. Usually you see people get A6000 A series for their cameras, but want to mention the color look a lot stronger than Sony default colors. Um, for which one? Sorry, what are we talking about? F. GMK Symbiote? Blurple would probably look really nice on this too. Actually, there's a few things that would look really nice on this. Yeah, this actually looks so pretty. I'm actually really vibing with this. This is a nice color combo. Future Funk is really pretty. Do you know of any 60% boards with arrow keys? Dude, you know what I do? I'll show you once we put, once we get everything in here. I literally bind, I do split, split like this. I bind this to layer one and then use these as my arrows. I just do that. That's, that's always what I do. I'm sure you can pick up, you know, the PCB and then do it, but I, I really don't like the layout of 60 plus arrows. Uh, always appreciate your streams, Alex. I had a pretty bad day today. Your streams always help me. Bro, we're all here for you, man. Best thing to do, best remedy, as usual. Spend time with loved ones. Spend time with us. Get your mind off of it. Tomorrow's gonna be a better day. It can't always be bad days, you know? It's gotta be positive yourself. It's infectious once you're positive. Old Tufu 60 had arrows. Do you guys like that layout though? I really don't like that layout. I, I really don't like the layout of having 60s and arrows. I think it looks a bit silly, personally. Sixties without arrows is a nightmare to use. Without arrows? Oh. I mean, everyone's gonna have different preferences. That's okay. Everyone's gonna have a bit of a different preference. Um, so let's keep in mind too, this board costs how much again? 219. So as we're putting this together, oh, there's no step caps. I didn't even realize the plate didn't offer that. That makes me so mad. <sighs> it's weird, the board I saw offered it, but I guess the plate didn't. I hope they, I hope they uh, readjust that. Why are there two tabs? Rip step caps? God damn it, dude. Now I gotta use regular caps. I know this is HHKB though. So before anyone gets mad, Aesthetic, it doesn't rattle and tick anymore because the gaskets. It actually is not sounding too bad. So some changes we had to do while building this that I didn't realize we had to do because it wasn't on the website. Uh, partly my own fault though. Probably should have realized, but uh, we had to add the little gaskets on top or on the bottom rather. But also it bottoms out and hits the bottom of the case. Now, it, this, this is the flex cut, very thin PCB version, which I don't think people will be getting if they do purchase this board. I, I'm assuming a lot of people would probably end up going for the 1.6 millimeter. That would also probably help a lot with the sound profile, assuming this sound profile doesn't sound very good, but it might sound fine since we've added foam to it. But we did change the bottom gaskets. We had to add the extra pieces of gasket, which is a, a bit weird. How is HHKB layout for gaming? Um, I would say it, take, it has a bit of a learning curve, truthfully, a slight learning curve to it. Kind of have to figure things out. Little space between the command and arrows. Command and arrows. Wait, which one? With the envoy? Command and arrow keys. Do you mean the control over here and the arrows? The switches are also kind of match the color of the case. Yeah, it's a really cool combo. Let's see. Oh, 
almost there. Oh, you mean the blocker? Those are some nice keycaps on the Envoy or whatever it is. Yeah, this is the mode tomorrow keycaps. Pretty nice, actually. Pretty nice. I like them. Uh, if you can only have one board for the rest of your life, I think I answered that already for you, Seasons. You, you mentioned it earlier in the stream. I said I picked the Envoy. It's the one board that I feel like I, I, I vibe with a lot. It's been treating me well. Very well. Oh boy, why does it feel like I'm missing keycaps? Here's the B. Uh, I mean the blocker is pretty much on every 65. Is there? God, why do I feel like I'm? I feel like I'm stupid now. Is there non-exploded? Well, non-blocker little things here for 65s. Do they offer that? I feel like I'm drawing a blank. Oh yeah, the constellation doesn't have one. You're right, and the tofu. You guys are right. You're right. How do they do that though? Is this a smaller shift? Wow, why am I blanking on this? Oh, yeah. All right. I actually love the way this looks. This is a nice color combo. Wait, low key though? Do one thing. Play with that key back. Let me do this instead. Ooh. Wait, this is kind of nice. Hold on, let me, let me brighten up this camera ever so slightly because I, I never. I was fiddling around with camera settings like I mentioned earlier. I never actually finished fiddling around with it. Oops, turned it off entirely. Earthquake? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This looks nice. Okay. So, let's review some stuff. Looks like we have to, I, I unfortunately thought we only had to use the one gasket. We had to add the adhesive gaskets. Would like to see that maybe changed. Not a big deal though. The board's 219. Here's the side profile again, if you guys wanna see it. Take off the desk pad here. Actually pretty cool. This is that five axis thing that this, this keyboard came out a while ago, but I don't think it did well in group five. There were some issues with it originally. It's pretty, 219 bucks. There's no weight on this. Um, I unfortunately don't have one of the production PCBs. So we have one of the thinner PCBs with flex cuts. So I did add foam to this, if that's okay with you guys. Again, I was told the foam is supposed to be one of the uh, not as in your face foamy sound signature foams. This is more of a review, yeah. Very pretty color, has the Stylo Studio thing on the bottom over here, the little logo. Very simplistic bottom. Probably why this board also doesn't cost as much. Draw the weight. Very cool side profile though. That is super pretty. I like that. <clears throat> and here's the top. Again, this kind of tapers inwards. But the, the bottom of the keyboard, again, kind of tapers out a little bit here. So you kind of see that. Might be a little bit weird to look at, though, from the top down. Definitely catches a bit of a reflection of the desk here. So it almost makes it look like it's sinking inwards. How much does this weigh? I'd say a little bit less than the Envoy. I don't know exactly how much it weighs. It does have a nice, comfortable typing angle as well as a front height. Nice switch combo to go with this. Uh, I don't know when this is actually coming up for sale though, but 219 is not that bad for this. Honestly, not bad at all. Now, keep in mind though, the Envoy does cost 189. Maybe for different markets of people, maybe someone who wants some something with a thicker bezel, maybe someone who wants more of an intricate side profile on their desk. 
I think I still think 210 is very respectable for this, yes. Very, very decent price for this guy. All right, let's see what this sounds like though. We are using mid plate foam. Again, I would have loved to see how this sounded like with the proper PCB, with the production model, but they did not have one for me. So maybe this is more in line of what the hot swap model with the flex cuts probably would have sounded like. So again, take it for what it's worth. And we are using the Kai Kaisia switches. Hmm. hmm, that's actually not too bad. Hold on. Plug this in actually. This is not muted at all. Do you think the front height's too high? It's what, 19 mil? It's not terrible. Let me see what the front height is. Yeah, 18.99 millimeters. It's not awfully high. This is in my range of what I actually like. There's a little bit of resonance in this. Oh shit. A little bit of uh, resonance in this. It's not hollow. Oh, sorry, it's not muted though. This is definitely not muted. This is a, this is way more noisy than the Envoy. I wouldn't say it's hollow. I would say it has a little bit of metallic sound signature from it. I almost want to say it's because of the thinner PCB, um, which again, won't be this thin, thin, thin PCB we have today. Yeah, it's super comfortable to type on though. This is extremely comfy to type on. I would love to see, yeah, I'd say, I'd say this with a 1.6 millimeter PCB might be really nice. Um, but again, I don't have one to test with you guys today, unfortunately. Ultimately though, not a bad sound signature. I think the main draw for this is probably gonna be the price point. We're using a polycarbonate plate. I also would like to see the FR4 plate with this. FR4 would probably be really nice. I didn't have many options in terms of what we could use today. This is polycarbonate with a JWK switch, um, which I think is already, I think this is like decently bright in terms of sound signature. Would have loved to see this with FR4. Would have loved to see this with 1.6 mil PCB. I think, I think the Envoy to me sounds a little bit better. Again, this is not my favorite rendition of the Envoy because I kind of prefer the long pull switches in the Envoy for some weird reason. This Envoy is a little bit more muted. I also don't like the PP plate. It's very rare that I like PP plates though. Let me get you the Envoy sound signature that I actually like. Where is my Envoy? Um, that's a great question. I don't remember where I put it. I don't know where I put it. Uh, this is the PP plates polypropylene. Heck ton of a bounce. Actually, probably the best way to. Anyways. Not bad though. I don't mind it. Space bar is kind of nice. Enters a little bit. Metallic-y sounding though. Backspace and shift are fine. The centerpiece mods don't sound the best in my opinion, but again, I think an FR4 plate would be really nice in this. PP plate on top mount, go crazy. Top mount, yes. 
Spark. This does not sound hollow at all. This is not a hollow sound. You, would you guys honestly, don't be influenced with what I say, define this as hollow? Bring Mike closer, I physically cannot. This is the same height as my head, like it's literally maybe two inches above me. The mic is the perfect, like I've done tons of testing, this is the perfect mic height for what you would hear at your desk. Yeah, I'd say it's more resonant than anything. Hollow would, in, would it ensue some sort of like weird, loud, echoing reverberation coming from it, but I, I would say this is more of metallic -y. A little bit metallic -y, slight metallic. Anyways, we'd still like to see this with an FR4 plate. I think this has a lot of potential. For 219, this is not bad. I think, again, this is for someone who maybe doesn't like the styling of other keyboards that are on the market right now. Um, for sure. Not bad though, not bad at all. I can see people really liking this for 219. Interesting bezel thicknesses. Very interesting bezel thicknesses. Nice colors. Needs a little polyfill. We could try putting the bottom foam in, but I have a feeling then it's gonna sound really foamy. This keyboard's a beautiful spectacle to see. It's pretty, it's very pretty though. That side profile is kind of hot. I like the color too. Uh, any IEMs you would recommend for the sub three hundred dollar range? Comfort being the most important factor. Um, Moondrop sells a whole bunch of stuff. You could get some of the cheaper campfire stuff. There's your YouTube title. Oh, which what was it? Uh, what's the process like to send you a keyboard to review? Email. Email me, and usually that's the best way to spark up a conversation there. For the price, it's a banger. Yeah, I'd say for 219, this is pretty solid. Again, when you're comparing it to things like the Envoy in the same class, that's where it kind of becomes a little bit more difficult to say that I prefer this. Uh, I prefer the Envoy, and it's $30 cheaper. However, again, we have to keep in mind there's preferences in this hobby. So if you really hate the way this looks, or you're just not a fan of this, or you're looking for way more bounce and flex in your build, like this has some, but definitely not as much as this. Uh, and if you prefer the sound signature, again, everyone's different. If you prefer the way this looks, you know, it's just, this is kind of my go-to for this price point right now. So this would be kind of like a side, not sidestep, but just an alternative where I do think this has a much fuller sound signature. Did you get my DM on Discord? Did you send me a DM, Brian? Did you send it right now? I don't see it. Can you resend it to me? All right, though, guys. I mean, it's a way different layout, too. Yeah, it's also 60% HHKB. There's also that factor you have to take into, for sure. Um, the Iskar was a bit muted. I remember also having that problem while building it. It just sounded a bit flat, but that's it's a very common thing with some of the keyboards from a few years ago where people were still experimenting with things. A lot of flatness in some of the uh, some of the keyboard seasons for sure. Honestly, I like the color of this though. I, I think I'm very in love with this plum. This plum is very pretty. I like it. So nice. I like the it a only lot. thing hotter than these builds. Regalicious. Thank you, dude. Appreciate you, man. Ed Sparta wants a compliment. And then the only thing hotter than this keyboard and this build, and maybe even me, I don't know, Reg said me. I would definitely say Ed, Ed Sparta is looking pretty cute right now. You know what I'm saying? Love you, dude. Uh, appreciate you being here as always. And hope the hope rest of your weekend goes well. Everything, you know? Have a good day, Alex. Here's a productive Sunday. Yes, for sure. Uh, I hope everyone has a very productive Sunday. All right, let's go see if we can go right, guys. This was fun. I, I actually didn't mind this at all. Um, let's see who we can quickly raid. Let's see who's on. Oh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Anyone doing keyboard stuff? Oh, we can raid Jay. 
He's starting now. I haven't raided Jay in a while. Uh, the keycaps are the tomorrow keycaps from Mode. Alright guys, we're going to be streaming tomorrow. I'll have the schedule up end of day, I hope. Um, and then, yeah, you guys will see. We have a lot of stuff to do this week, again. So, also, Tuesday, I think Tuesday? Maybe even tomorrow. I don't remember what day I wanted to do it. In the next three days, I'll be doing some of the more of those co-working streams. I don't know. I thought it was fun hanging out with everyone while I was working on stuff. If you guys want to, it'll be during the day. So if you guys have nothing to do, you could just hang out. <laughs> we could just chill, you know, co-work, you know, do their thing. So, yeah, until then, though, guys, see you. Have fun. Uh, enjoy your Sundays. And, uh, yeah, spectacle. Not too bad from Click Clack. Definitely a few things I would like change. I don't really love having the, both the gaskets, but definitely would like to see that change. Uh, not, not a deal breaker for 219, though. Peace out, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your Sundays. Love you and enjoy Jay's stream. Bye, everyone. See you in Discord.